Once upon a time, there was a great guru. And this guru had a strange and a very disturbing blessing. Always surrounded by devotees who constantly sought blessings for worldly happiness or material remedies for their suffering. He raised his hand over each person's head, each supplicant's head, each person who asked him for material blessings. And he solemnly declared, may you become materially destitute. May all your material problems destroy everything that you possess. This so-called blessing frightened all and angered many. How dare this guru wish material destitution upon us, they cried in fear and frustration and rage. Yet those realized souls who understood its deeper meaning marveled at its profound wisdom. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells Arjun that this world is a dukha alayam ashashvatam. This is a anityam asukham lokam. This is a place of misery where everything is temporary. This is a place where you cannot find any lasting happiness. He also tells Arjun, that janma mrityu jara vyadhi dukha doshanu darshanam. Birth and death and old age and fault and misfortune and unhappiness. These are guaranteed to everyone. Indeed, one of the first things that Krishna teaches us in Bhagavad Gita is that whatever there is that is around us, that is constantly changing is unreal. Whereas that which is real never perishes. It is unreal because it is temporary. And the more we become attached to this unreal, ever-changing world, this world where nothing, everything changes except the law of change. And the more we become attached to this world and the things in this world, the more suffering we experience. The Bhagavad says that indeed all of us are engaged in two universal activities. Sukhaya Dukkha Mokshaya Sankalpa Iha Karmina Sada apnoti haya dukham, anihaya sukham ana oritam. You are either trying to increase your happiness, your worldly happiness, or you are struggling somehow to reduce your misery. Yet, the truth is that your very essence is bliss. And the moment you try to increase this essence of bliss from an external source, that is the moment that our miseries begin. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that in truth, we have to aspire to find that happiness within us, not without us. 
यो अंत सुखो अंतारामास तथा अंतर ज्योतिरेव यह स योगी ब्रह्म निर्वाणम ब्रह्म भूत आदि गच्छति वन हु इज हैप्पी विद इन हु इज कंटेंट विद इन हु इज इल्यूमिन विद इन सच अ पर्सन रेस्ट इन ट्रांसेंडेंस एंड सच अ पर्सन अटेन्स द सुप्रीम so every spiritual text on this subcontinent asks the individual to rest in his natural devotional bliss to god and that natural devotional bliss is causeless and do not depend on pleasures in the world that are artificial and that are dependent on an ever changing material source indeed krishna clearly points out the attitude that he wants from all of us within the world externally we must be warriors but internally we must be sanyasis asakt buddhir sarvatra जीतात्म विगत स्पृह नैष्कर्म्य सिद्धि परम सन्यासेनाधिगछति वन हुज माइंड एंड इंटेलेक्ट इज अनअटैच्ड एवरीवेयर हु हैव कंकर्ड एंड मास्टर्ड देयर माइंड एंड इंटेलिजेंस हु आर फ्री फ्रॉम डिजायर्स बाय द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ रिनंसिएशन such people attain the highest perfection of freedom from all action and reaction in the 18th chapter of the bhagavad gita krishna points out to arjuna in the second text dri bhagwan vacha kamyanam karmanam nyasam सन्यासम कवयो विदु सर्व कर्म फल त्यागम प्राहुस त्याज त्यागम विचिक्षण टू गिव अप ऑल द रिजल्ट ऑफ एक्टिविटीज इज कॉल्ड रिनाउंसिएशन एंड दैट स्टेट इज कॉल्ड द रिनाउंस्ड ऑर्डर ऑफ लाइफ सो इन द ट्वेल्थ चैप्टर ऑफ द भगवद गीता कृष्ण से that one must work within the world fully content but endeavoring with great determination santushta satatam yogi yatatma dridh nischaya mai arpita mano buddhir yo mad bhaktah samay priya so this is the nature that krishna wants us to develop to be situated on our original spiritual platform and being content within yet moving in the world with great determination acting appropriately striving for the best yet seeing all external events their conclusions their implications with perfect internal detachment indeed the real spiritual seeker he sees worldly joys and happiness as a distraction from the true eternal bliss that lies inside him or her so the things that are there in the outer world the joys that come unsought they are actually a distraction from your search for the true bliss that lies inside of you therefore every external happiness is looked at with suspicion 
every material blessing is looked at with suspicion. Whereas every affliction and sorrow is welcome and embraced as a springboard for a leap into the spiritual world within. The Chaitanya Charitamrita describes how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was once cursed by a Brahmin for starting the Sankirtan movement, believing that it adversely affected his livelihood. And he told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I curse you so that you may be completely without any material happiness. On hearing this, Lord Chaitanya was filled with ecstasy and he began jumping and dancing and singing in complete God intoxication. At the conclusion of the battle of Kurukshetra, Queen Kunti is filled with deep fear while awaiting her impending coronation and awaiting a life of royal happiness. In her impassioned prayer to Lord Krishna, she begs, Vipada Santu Tu Shashwat Tatra Tatra Jagat Guru Bhavato Darshanam Yatsyad Apunar Bhava Darshanam So Queen Kunti, she prays, that, oh, you have gone through so many miseries in life. My sons were poisoned. They were in a lacquer house that was set on fire. And so on and so forth. So many miseries came upon me. And she says, I wish that I could visualize these calamities again and again and again. Because when I remember these calamities, oh God, I remember you. And remembering you means I will no longer see repeated births and deaths. So the miseries in life are used by Queen Kunti as an instrument to remember, to visualize, so that she can be inspired to remember God. In the Bhagavad Puran, it is described by none other than Bhakta Prahlad. He's speaking to his fellow Daityas and he says, Why are you struggling for happiness, my fellow Daityas? You don't have to struggle by, for happiness. Happiness comes, worldly happiness comes by superior arrangement without your having to struggle for your happiness. Did you ever have to struggle for your misery? You never had to struggle for sorrows and misery. Did they not come to you unasked? So also worldly happiness also comes to you unasked by divine arrangement. So Krishna in, you know, in the Bhagavat, the actual verse is 7.6.3. Sukham Aindriyakam Daitya Deha Yogena Dehinam Sarvatra labhyate daivad yatha dukham ayatnataha. My dear friends born in demonic families, the happiness which you perceive in the world through your senses can be obtained in any form of life. And this happiness is attained by superior arrangement, by divine arrangement. Just as you attain distress and misery, both of them come entirely by divine arrangement. So, 
So what should you do? First of all, stop craving worldly happiness. What is to come to you will come to you unasked. Don't be struggling against material distress. That also will come to you without your asking for it. What is a blessing? What is a curse? Be balanced in life. Be situated on the spiritual platform seeking happiness within you. And at the same time, remain endeavoring with great determination within the world. Santushta satatam yogi yatatma drida nishchaya mai arpita mano buddhir yomad bhaktaha same priya. I think this is 12.14 in the Bhagavad Gita. Be always content within, but endeavor in the world with great determination. With your mind and intelligence surrendered to me, such a person is very dear to me. Such a person is my devotee, Krishna says. So Krishna describes in the second chapter how we should behave in both happiness and in distress. And Krishna says, A purya manam achalo pratishtam samudra apa pravishanti yadvat tadvat kama pravishanti sarve so shantim apnoti na kama kami. The ocean, at the time of monsoon, at the time of tsunami, continues to welcome the rivers that rush into it. Doesn't refuse the rivers that rush into it. At the same time, when there is a drought, when rivers dry up, the ocean remains ever full. So also, if you want to follow the path of the Sthita Pradnya, rest in inner contentment and bliss. Whatever worldly pleasures come by divine arrangement, welcome them and embrace them. But never miss them when they are lacking. And all miseries that come unasked, embrace them. And welcome them. Don't fight with them. And use them as a springboard so that you may go deeper and deeper within yourself. So what is a blessing and what is a curse? The answer is who knows. If you become a devotee of Bhagavan Krishna, you will know that Nothing is a blessing, nothing is a curse. In fact, if you can look at it this way, everything is a blessing. There are no curses. Na rishyati, na dveshyati, na sochati, na kangshati. Shubha a shubha parityagi. Yo madhavakta vasame priya. So for the devotee of God, for him, he doesn't jump with joy. He doesn't sink with sorrow. He doesn't think something is auspicious and something is inauspicious. He doesn't see something as a blessing and he doesn't see something as a curse. Indeed, he looks at everything within this world as coming from the Lord. And therefore, whatever comes from the Lord is entirely divine and always a blessing. The Brihad Aranaka Upanishad says, Tena vina tranam apina chalati. Not a blade of grass moves without God's consent. If the grass moves on the left side, it is by God's consent. If it moves on the right side, it is also by God's consent. 
we must accept god's consent and surrender to his will whatever he has given us powers to change we must use that power and endeavor in the world with great determination that which is beyond your circle of control that which is beyond your capacity to affect or in, in influence you must learn to accept it and embrace it as the will of god this is called submission to the will of god this is called surrender sarva dharman parityaja maam ekam sharanam vraja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo moksha ishami masucha so indeed the path of sharanagati the path of sharanagati accepts blessings and curses inauspicious and auspicious things things never think something is lucky and something is unlucky but accepts everything as coming from god does anyone have any questions on the subject matter yes sir um can you hear me yes um before actually we open i mean we ask questions um i would also like to tell your audience that if you want to um want uh, dr nagarkatti to pick up any particular topic of the bhagavad gita that we haven't covered till now or if you're interested in that so please let us know you can write to us in the comment section or offline as well you can write to us and we will pick them as the week progresses so please write in with all your suggestions to us and we will pick them up uh dr shantanu um you know one of the questions that we have is that um um is it okay you know often we uh, you know when anger gets the best out of us or if we are in a bad mood or something really someone has really hurt us according to our standards uh, we curse them so uh, you know uh, do curses work the same way as blessing do should we really curse someone out of anger त्री विधम नरकस्य इदम द्वारम नाशनम आत्मन काम क्रोध तथा लोभ तस्मा देता त्रयम तुझे देयर आर थ्री गेट्स दैट लीड टू हेल लस्ट एंगर एंड ग्रीड एंड एवरी वाइज मैन शुड अवॉइड दिस थ्री गेट्स एंगर अकर्स व्हेन यू डिजायर समथिंग and that desire is obstructed and we take out anger at the person who has obstructed our desire this is what is described in the bhagavad gita chapter 2 dhyayato vishayan pumsah sangaste sapajayate sang sanjayate kamah kam krodh bujayate क्रोधात भवति सम्मोह सम्मोह स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति भ्रमशात बुद्धि नाशो बुद्धि नाशात प्रणश्यति एंगर इज बर्निंग योर ओन हाउस डाउन बिकॉज यू वांट टू किल अ रैट ऑल कर्सेस दैट यू गिव पीपल इन एंगर बाउंस ऑफ दैट अदर पर्सन एंड कम ऑन टू यू so you are the ultimate victim of all the curses that you give in anger therefore if you are wise you will restrain yourself and you will in fact protect yourself by not becoming angry and certainly you will control yourself from imagining that you are cursing other people because indeed that curse will rebound on you um uh, right uh, uh dr shantanu dr shantanu there is a saying we often say that you know blessings in disguise you know everything is a blessing in disguise when um, normally uh, you know human beings individuals sometimes fail to see the blessing which is there you know we often say that oh something bad has happened how can it be a blessing so what really one should do to actually 
you know hold water to that statement saying that blessing in disguise we often say it but rarely do people believe in it you should go onto the internet and you should hear the talk by steve jobs in the commencement address the graduation address to stanford university where indeed he points out that you can understand things as a blessing only when you look backwards and connect the dots when you look backward in your life and connect the dots you will find out that everything has happened for a purpose and has led you to this particular juncture in your life and what you thought was a curse turned out to be a blessing so you need to have full faith in god that even if you do not understand how it is for your as a blessing you must accept that because it is coming from him it is a blessing na rishyati na dveshyati na sochati na kankshati shubha shubha parityagi yo mad bhakta same priya don't jump with joy don't sink with sorrow don't consider something to be lucky or unlucky don't think this is a blessing or that is a curse accept everything as the will of god and that will of god is for the best okay um you of course spoke about anger i think we have a question connected to that uh, dear sir how to balance both anger and at the same time also work through being pushed around i think earlier i have discussed this subject that there is what we call as assertive anger and there is what we call as destructive rage so there's a difference between those two destructive rage is a reactive emotion and assertive anger is a proactive emotion destructive rage destroys relationships and lands you into trouble assertive anger improves relationships and in fact it increases understanding between people in destructive rage you disrespect the other person by giving galis in assertive anger you address the other person suniye ji excuse me sir so there's the whole subject on anger maybe we can cover that separately at some time but certainly there is a balance between the two krishna tells arjuna to fight the pandavas who are out to kill him now how can he fight them if he is not acting in assertive anger so therefore he has to act in proactive assertive anger and so do you but first you have to come to the platform of equanimity first you have to come to that silence of the mind and then you have to select that instrument that emotional instrument which will help you to function appropriately in these circumstances please go and hear my talk on emotional intelligence and the bhagavad gita and you'll probably find on the internet another talk i've given on emotional intelligence you will find the answers there right and of course uh, you have also covered it in one of the speaking tree r sessions so you will find it on the facebook page of speaking tree you just have to go in the videos tab and you will find in the earlier session uh, dr nagakati has covered emotional intelligence and the bhagavad gita uh, moving on uh, uh, dr shantanu we have a question as in how does one distinguish between accepting something and the time to, and to realize when is the time to take action it is always time to take action action is the first option 
In fact, thinking is the cause of all despair and action is the solution. It is when action is not possible for you, when things are beyond your control, when indeed you have no effect on the situation at hand, then you have to learn to accept. Can you stop a war between your country and the next? No, you can't. But yes, you can act and you can support the nation patriotically in the time of war. So whatever is possible for you to do, always do it because action is the core message of the Bhagavad Gita. When action is beyond your scope, it is beyond your means, it's beyond your pay grade, it's beyond your control, then of course you have to accept it as the will of God. Right. And uh, thank you. And before, of course, uh, we ask uh, Dr. Shantru to give the closing statements, I'd also like to reiterate that um, um, you know, uh, again, I'd like to reiterate that please write in with your suggestions to us and we will try and cover the suggestions that you've given. Please write in in the comment section or for those who are watching on Zoom, they can also mm -hmm. write in with their suggestions. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shantu. I think these were the questions that we have this week. We've got some time. So in case you want to add something to the session or you want to uh, tell us something, please go ahead. So what I want to tell you today is there someone asking a question? No, Dr. Shantanu, I don't have any question. So the message today is that essentially happiness lies inside of you. Nothing in the world will make you happy. Nobody in the world will make you happy. Don't think this one will make me happy, that one will make you me happy. Your job is to look deep inside yourself, find that happiness and share that happiness with the rest of the world. As long as you look for happiness in the world, because the world is constantly changing and because nothing lasts within the world and because the world is full of illusion and deception, you will only get misery if you look for happiness within the world. So in truth, find happiness within because the Lord is within your heart. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam Ride Deshi Arjuna Tistati Brahmyan Sarva Bhutani Yantrarudani Maya. He says, I am seated in your heart and I am driving you onward towards your destiny. You are merely seated in a machine made of material energy. Tameva Sharanam Gacha Sarva Bhavi Navharata Tat Prasadat Param Shantim Stanam Prapshishi Shashvatam. Simply surrender into the Lord. Do what he wants you to do. Follow in the direction he is taking you. For with, in this manner you will find peace, perfection and the supreme destination. Don't look at things as good luck or bad luck. Indeed, everything is wonderful because it comes from God. That doesn't mean that you simply become inactive. Activity is the primary purpose, a message of the Bhagavad Gita. Always act. Do whatever is within your power. But act with proactive emotion. Don't act with reactive emotion. Which means reach the platform of equanimity of mind. And then intelligently select the emotion which is appropriate for those circumstances. And as Krishna says, Always be content, Santushta Satatam Yogi. Yet, 
endeavor in the world with great determination. Yatatma dhrida nishchaya. And if your mind and intelligence are surrendered to God, mayar pita mano buddhir, you will be very dear to him. Okay. Uh, great, Dr. Shantanu, we've just got one question. I think we'll take it. Um, um, I'll read out the question, so it's a slightly longer question. What should we do when we want to resolve a dispute, but the other person is not interested? The blame then is all on us when in truth, the other person is wrong. Look, dispute resolution is an art by itself and a science on its own. So we have many, many skill sets and one of them is dispute resolution. And if you are unable to do it by yourself, you can appoint someone to arbitrate. And when all arbitration fails, then all bets are off. Even in the battle of Kurukshetra, Krishna was the arbitrator. He went and he tried every option in order to stop the Kauravas from deciding to come and kill the Pandavas. And when they refused, and they were completely unreasonable, violent and murderous. Then it resulted in war. So seek arbitration. Let some neutral party become that instrument of God to resolve your conflict. Uh, great. Thank you so much, Dr. Shantanu. Um, and thank you for everyone for watching. And we look forward to your suggestions on the topics that we should cover next. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Om. Jai Shri Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you.